Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, red leather. And let's go! Welcome to a little show that we're going to be calling Comic Run. Pretty much we're going to be talking about pulls that come out throughout each week on Wednesdays, more than likely New Comic Book Day, as some of you may be aware. If there are any that you think that we should be talking about on the show, please let me know. Hit me up in the comments. Also, reach out on social media. Links to all that silly stuff down in the description, of course. Today, starting off, they hit it out of the park once again. We are talking about none other than Children of the Atom number two. <laughs> Can you believe it? So, it's actually... Again, cover art, freaking gorgeous. It's gonna be on the screen everywhere else besides just me showing it to you right here. But uh, gotta say, just got done reading it right before talking to you right now. And uh, holy freaking moly, pretty tight. So to anyone who may be unfamiliar as to what exactly Children of the Atom are, who they are, they are these younger, I guess you could consider them young X-Men. That's at least what the humans are calling them on the human side of the world. There's this whole island called Krakoa where mutants can live freely without prejudice and terrible laws thrown in their way. <laughs> Current times and the past of human history. <laughs> Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, just in case you're maybe not privy to what X-Men comics are, I'm very much a noob myself, which is kind of why I wanted to do this show. I feel as though it's a fun way for us all to be able to learn together. And also, if you happen to be a super huge comic book nerd, maybe you can teach me and everyone else here a little bit of something. I would look forward to that. School me all you want. Just be kind and constructive when you do it. Yeah, right. Anyway, moving on. So, yes, we have these young X-Men, if you will, who are not quite joining the X-Men. For whatever reason, in the first issue, they kind of don't want to join them. They don't exactly say why, other than, you know, they have families, they want to be able to finish school, even though on the island of Krakoa, um, the X-Men have plenty of education that can just be, like, the Matrix just installed in them. Uh, they now know Kung Fu. I can now do a calculus. Stuff like that. It's super cool, but they're like, no, you know what, we kind of want to be kids right now. We kind of want to be able to enjoy ourselves. They get to high school, they're having fun. In the first issue, there's a little bit of an inkling of uh, Cyclops Lass. Not a big fan of that name. Cyclops Lass? Really? Okay, that said, character design, as again shown right around here, really sick. Everyone in this, at least what they've revealed so far in the first two issues of this run, they have their own complications in life. They're not just, you know, happy-go-lucky kids who are able to fight with superpowers. You know, they have their own issues in life, their losses, what they're really good at. And there's a little bit of teen drama, but it's not overly, like, heavy-handed to where I feel like, here we go, Gossip Girl. I just aged myself a little bit, I think. And it's super fun kind of just seeing how these high schoolers are able to navigate life as well as in a world where they have to be low-key, or at least they feel they need to be low-key, about who they really are and the powers they possess within the human world that they live in, i.e. New York, Los Angeles, what have you. Um, so that's what's kind of fun about it. Them kind of like, I don't know, it's really kind of dark and it's super sad and yet, and again, reflects on current social issues we have in our world today, which, I mean, that's kind of what X-Men was created to talk about to begin with. So it, I don't know, it, to date this episode probably a little bit, there are some terrible things going on in the news right now in certain areas of the United States where I happen to be from. And, you know, it's really hurtful to see just what these kids have to go through and what they're hiding. Because they feel as though they can't properly and fully express who they are and show the world who they are without being damned for it quite, you know, socially, on a social level. I mean, there's a chance that they may not be able to live if someone were to find out what they're up to. So... It's really kind of dark. Anyway, this team of young X-Men, you could say that is head by Cyclops Lass. That still stings a little bit. I mean, I guess in the lore, the character came up with, with the name herself, so that way it's paying ode and homage, if you will, to actually Cyclops, old Scotty boy, which is cool and everything like that. Again, character design, mwah. But it, I just, the name probably could use a little bit of sprucing up. We'll call her Buddy, because that's actually what her nickname is outside of her street name, if you will. Um, so, yeah, her alter ego. Anyway, that is the case. I have been enjoying this book quite a bit. I'm glad that I got to, uh, to number two. 
But just to backtrack a little bit, again, we're going to get spoilery a little bit. Not too crazy. There hasn't been too much revealed yet, in my opinion. But there are some things that we need to look out for. Uh, so, leave. Come back. Read the story of, of issue one. Then come back. Read issue two. Come back after that as well, I guess. That's the order of things, right? It's one before two? Cool. So, um, essentially, at the end of the first issue these young X-Men, these children of the Atom, if you will. They are about to go through this portal, which leads them to Krakoa. However, if I interpreted what happened in the last couple panels correctly, which, again, by the way, holy crap, that the that last, like, those last two pages or three pages of issue number one are gorgeous. Can't say enough about that. There are some things throughout the comic book or in the first issue where the art style is 100% for me and then all of a sudden it becomes it at certain moments. At least when it hits, it freaking hits. But yes, with that, they are trying to go through this portal which is only supposed to work for mutants. And so they're like, hey, you know what? We're mutants. Let's go do this. Uh, stroll on no thank you. They end up staying right where they were. And so they're stuck in the city. They didn't make it to Krakoa. And they're like, oh, what the hef is going on? Hef? You hef? Rest in peace? Rest in paradise? I apparently probably is right now, considering if it is, yeah, we'll get away from that one right now. <laughs> so that happens. Issue two doesn't really jump right off where that went. It kind of just continues to go on. They're fighting the uh, Hell's Bells, if you will. B-E-L-L-E -L -L -E apostrophe S. Uh, actually, no apostrophe after that S. It's before that. Doesn't matter. Uh, so it's this like female rogue team of mutants, essentially. And it's pretty cool to see them kind of combat. They realize they're way out of their league until Storm and the rest of the crew jump in like, yo, back off these kids. We'll grant you amnesty in Krakoa. We'll kind of forgive you ish for the sins you've committed against humanity, but just come with us now. I believe that at the end of the at the end of the second issue, the Hell's Bells, the, you know, tough ladies of mutant kind that are still left behind in the human realm because they like to wreak, wreak havoc and stuff. They felt left behind by the X-Men and everyone else that left to Krakoa in issues back long and lore before. Lore before Maybe that's what the show should be called. <laughs> anyway, don't take that from me. I think I just spat at you. I apologize. So, yes. X-Men, take the Hell's Bells. The young X-Men, if you will. They are kind of like, well, you know what? No, you need to get out of here. They, These Hell's Bells ladies need to get out of here. They need you more than we do. Take them away with that portal device that you have. We'll find our own way. We have uh, Daycrawler. Kind of cute, like a younger version of Nightcrawler. Cute name. Uh, they're like, you know what? This guy can teleport us out of here. We'll make sure that we go far away. No worries. We got you, dog. We got you, Storm. Thank you, Aurora, but we'll find you next time. So they teleport out of there. They go to try to do the teleport one more time to make it Krakoa to Krakoa to Krakoa. I got that. So they're like, ah, oh, la -di -da, let's do this and to be continued. Cannot believe it. It was kind of like, okay, cool, fun little cliffhanger. I I, I almost couldn't tell. I'm, I, I mean, I'm a little bit of a dummy if you couldn't tell already. But I almost couldn't tell if the second issue was actually lining, uh, was leaving off where the first issue did. I imagine it's going to be two different things. It's not the same timeline. timeline. Uh, certainly second issue is based in time after the first one would assume, and it sort of seems like it, just based off the events that happened in the second issue, I just felt like maybe they could have held my hand a little bit more. I mean, it seemed like it was pretty self-explanatory, but at the same time, I feel like maybe the pacing of the second issue could have gone a little bit better, but it was cool. We get to kind of get to know a little bit more about the bigger brawner guy that's part of these young X-Men. Um, I don't know, I thought he was really kind of sick. You kind of learn that there's some uh, crushes going on within the team and such. Again, a la teen drama, but also just humanity, if you will, as well. Um, but yeah, that is the case for X-Men, Children of the Atom, number one and two. Just to kind of summarize, hey, don't go running off too quickly now. Let me know just as well whether or not you kind of want to see if we can break up these episodes a little more. Is it a lot taking in, talking about like four books or something like that within one episode? Should it be less? Should it be even more would you do you think maybe one book or one issue per episode would be a little nicer for you let's hear it out in the comments um i may just oblige and see what i can do to help y'all out just making the show what you want it to be maybe we can meet some more fun in the middle anyway have a great one we'll catch you later yeah.